guys, it's your best fight friends. I'm Kelsey. That's Stephen McCarty. Stephen, of course, is here for Story of the Week. Week, week, week. Welcome, Stephen. Thank you. Tell me, Stephen. Now, of course, you and I cover the UFC, but also other all the combat sports, right? For heavy, we see yeah. a lot of stories every week. There's big story, big story, big story. What was your best, biggest, favoriteest, whatever is story this week, Stephen? Yeah, we do like to cover all combat sports, including tag team karate, deathmatch, jujitsu, everything. Bare knuckle, bare knuckle, like knife boxing. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so, but I'm going to stick within the world of UFC for this okay. one. Um, this came out yesterday. I, don't know, I thought it was really interesting because it's two big names and it would have been a really cool matchup to see. And I think that cool dynamics here for both fighters. Uh, so, MMA insider Ariel Helwani came out yesterday with a quick little report saying that uh, Luke Rockhold was offered a fight with Hamzat Chemaev at 185 pounds. Luke Rockhold is a former, obviously, UFC and Strike Force middleweight champion. Uh, thought it was really interesting because then Luke Rockhold, I guess, told Ariel Helwani that Hamzat denied the fight. He wants to stay at 170 pounds. And then Luke Rockhold gave uh, Helwani this statement. All respect, but I thought he would fight anyone he is in Ch uh, Chimaya, which has kind of been Chimaya's MO, right? It's been kind of, hey, I'll smash, smash anybody, anytime, anywhere. But what I think is very interesting from this report is that it verifies that Hamzat is actually sticking with 170 pounds. It seems like what he was going to do is kind of bounce around weight classes. Like if you remember, he's had three fights in the UFC and two of them have been at middleweight. But he was offered the big fight with Leon Edwards at welterweight at the time. And still, I believe, Leon uh, Edwards is ranked number three at welterweight. So it seems like Chemayev is going to try to stick on, in that welterweight lane and really work his way toward title shot. That's kind of what I got from this report from Chemayev saying, I don't think he's scared to fight Rockhold. I think that he's trying to figure out the best path forward, especially because he just lost, you know, at this point, almost a year, like 10 months for, yeah. of his fight career because of the whole COVID-19 uh, thing with him with these lingering effects from it. Uh, he said he wants to come back in August. He said that several times. Seems like he's picking the lane, which is 170 pounds. It would have been a really fight with Luke, a uh, real fun fight with Luke Rockhold. But I'm happy to see Chumayev kind of picking a lane here. And then Luke Rockhold on his end, he wants to get back. He's having a hard time finding a fight, it seems. He's told several uh, MMA reporters that uh, he told also Aaron Helwani he wants to return sometime later this summer and he wants a ranked 185 pounder so that's cool to see Luke Rockwell getting back in the mix also somebody who we thought was going to be running the middleweight division when he defeated Chris Weidman back I think in 2015 or something it seemed like Luke Rockwell was going to be running that division for a while. And then he lost it that next fight to Michael Bisping. So mm. very cool uh, report just with these two big names in this sport. Very interesting, Kelsey. Yeah, surprising uh, turn of events. I was having a conversation fairly recently about Jemayev with another welterweight star, Bilal Muhammad. And here's what I asked Bilal. I'm going to ask you, Stephen. Do you think, like, we saw his momentum stop. Jemayev's momentum stopped. But also, do you think the way he kind of, remember when he kind of flipped out and decided to retire for, you know, a short amount of time? Do you think that removed some of the boogeyman mystique from him? I no, I think by the time he gets a fight booked and if the fight goes really well for him, I think all of that's gone. But honestly, MMA has a short memory. Look oh. at Conor McGregor. Yeah. He, he just got walloped in his last fight. Now going into this fight, it's like, oh, man, Conor's back. Let's go. Um MMA has very, very short memory. I think that that won't even really play much of a narrative for, for Chimaev. I think that it was reported pretty well, like what happened with USC president Dana White coming out and saying like, hey, Chimaev was just really, really frustrated. He tried to train something that he does, that he all, all he knows what how to do is train and fight. He tried to do that. He couldn't do it because of the effects from COVID-19. And uh, he got frustrated and retired. And the fact that he's deleted it and hasn't really said anything about it since, I think that we all, as an MMA community, will probably just move on from that. And I don't know, like MMA, we always like to have, you know, like a, a new up and coming star. So it's fun to have Chimaev. It's fun to, to watch it. I don't know. I don't, he, his persona is such a dry, like, you know, like strong persona that I don't even think we think about it. So no, I don't, I don't think that's going to be a thing. 
Well, I guess I'll have to be begrudgingly agree with you and Bilal Muhammad. Bilal Muhammad just laughed at me when I said that. Like, he was like, <laughs> what? No. So I guess it's fine. We'll let Chemayev be Chemayev. He really is one of the biggest, like, remember, like, he, all of a sudden he had a bazillion followers on social media. I'm excited to see him back. And I think regardless of where, you know, it stands in that situation, as soon as he annihilates somebody again, he'll be right back on top. Steven, that's an interesting story to me. Yeah, I think um, I also think that the UFC is going to uh, give him a ranked opponent for his comeback. I, I really think that and they'll probably be within the top 10. So I don't know. He has lost momentum in the way of time, things like that. However, he has I don't think he's lost momentum in his rise in the welterweight division. I think that they'll give him a big name. He'll get that win and then he'll probably might only be like one win away from a title shot at that point. Ooh, that'd be amazing. That's Fun. what I, I think. I think the UFC wants to get behind this guy. I'm excited about his future. I'm, I'll tell you what else I'm excited about, Stephen. That was a good little segue, don't you think? I'll tell you what else I was excited about. I'm excited about the return of the Olympics, right? Remember, we were supposed to have the Olympics last year, but the pandemic messed everything up. So all there's a lot of people out there that had worked their whole lives to qualify for the Olympic team, right? And they finally get to, and then what happened? The Olympics got rescheduled for a year later the tokyo 2020 olympics are happening in 2021 i talked to one of team canada's boxers Ooh. and one of their best hopes to medal women's middleweight tamara tebow and i was just so grateful to talk to somebody she's 24 years old she's lived her whole life she saw the first women's olympic boxing team which for the america team I remember about heart, Clarissa Shields, Marlon Esparza, and Queen Underwood, because it was such a big deal to see women's boxers finally in the Olympics. She remembered um, watching that group, including her own team from Canada, go to the Olympics for the first time. And she's like, you know, like a, a pretty young person back then. And she was like, oh, I want to do that someday. And lo and behold, here we are, 2021 for the 2020 Olympics. And now she gets to do that. I, I think it's amazing. Stephen, we were talking a little bit about boxing before we started recording here and how you asked me, we'll do about how the Olympic, how the boxing works in the Olympics. And I, and I tried to explain it to you and realized that I don't even know, right? At the old days, it used to be amateur fighters only. Now I think they allow professionals, but Man, can we get boxing back on track, Stephen? I don't understand. Like, why is it both of us do this for a living and it's complicated for us? I mean, yeah. I mean, boxing is it's the most com complicated thing okay. that I've ever tried to piece together. But um, yeah, so, no, I totally agree. And also, what about MMA? Yeah. Are we going to get MMA in the Olympics? I think if we have, you can go into the Olympics for Taekwondo, but you can't go into the Olympics for, uh, for MMA. Yeah. It's kind of weird to me. I've heard a push for that. Now we've got wrestling in the Olympics, right? We've got boxing. We've got Taekwondo. A lot of, lot of martial arts are in there. There's not a jujitsu in the Olympics, but maybe there should be. Is there a judo in there? There is judo, of course. Yeah, because Kayla Harrison, yeah. uh, PFL Women's Lightweight Champion. Two Ronda, Ronda Rousey, too. Gold right? medal, medalist in, in uh, Olympic, at the Olympics for judo. So we have all these separate martial arts, you're right, that are in the Olympics. Do we need an MMA in the Olympics or do we like MMA as it is now, which is truly a mixing of the, the separate martial arts? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I do. I think that we need it for sure because, um, I mean, why wouldn't we? It's still a martial art. It's mixed martial arts. It's still a martial art. You just put all the martial arts together. I guess maybe that's not true. Why well, don't but I still it think used to be, it used to be like, people would have their different disciplines, right? But now what we have today after the, and you know this better than me because you're a better MMA historian than I am, that today, I feel like when you go to a class, you can go to an MMA, you, you learn MMA. You don't yeah, learn, totally. You so know, it's like the, it's the martial art of fight. Like it's, a, it's its own. I mean, it's not its own martial art because it's a conglomerate of all of the martial arts, but it's its own practice, mixed martial arts, you know, like, I don't know. I mean, you do go in and like one day you're doing kickbox, another day you're doing wrestling or grappling or whatever. But still, you then when you spar, you put it all together. It's a it's its own martial art, you know. Yeah. But it's just mixed martial arts. It's weird. I hope that we get some some kind of uh, I don't know. I actually don't have an opinion on whether MMA should be in the Olympics. But what I do have an opinion on is this. I was talking to Tamara Tebow. Of course, she's from your land, 
O Canada, Stephen. And I was wondering, I was like, I wonder if someday she'll go to the UFC or go to MMA. Maybe she'll be the next PFL fighter, right? Like Clarissa Shields, because what Clarissa did was really important. She was the first gold medal winner for in her country for bo- women's boxing. She did it twice. I thought like, oh, she's the, she's the thing. She's the big deal. Well, she's not liking what she's seeing in boxing and she's moving over to MMA to, to see if there's greener pastures. So I wonder what will happen for Tamara. I wonder too. Go um, Canada though, huh? Did you know she's a plant? She's powered by plants only. That's awesome. <laughs> That's good. I, I, there are a lot of athletes that are doing that nowadays. There's that uh, documentary called Game Changers, which is all about athletes doing uh, plant-based diets. My, I was like, well, what about bacon, though? But see, you guys have Canadian bacon. I don't want to get into the jokes. We don't eat Canadian. We have Canadian bacon, but it's not like we eat Canadian bacon that much. Well, when you eat, eat Canadian bacon, bacon, are you like, this is bacon? No, we call it Canadian bacon, but we don't have, or like ham. Like call it ham, but what do you? Well, what is I don't ham know. called? Well, it's called ham. Canadian bacon <laughs> is like it's like, I mean, it's ham. Like it's like okay. circular, and you can put it on, you know, like egg McMuffins and stuff. We don't so, have Canadian. We have bacon here. We eat lots of bacon. Here. I don't want to get off on a tangent here, but if you were to invite me over to your house for ham, would I just have to keep my head on a swivel because I don't know what you're going to give me? Canadian no, we, bacon or regular ham? We would be uh, having a big. <laughs> think of ham and maybe wrap it with bacon there's nothing as disappointing and i'll tell you one quick story then we'll get off this somebody invited me over for ribs once and i got there steven and it was beef ribs and i was like this is disappointing you know what i mean beef have ribs. you had pork have, do you guys have ribs up there you know about ribs right we have ribs we, yes we have ribs well there's beef ribs and there's pork ribs and beef ribs are just giant pieces of cow pork ribs are like Little pieces of bacon on ribs. We're getting off topic here. Tamara is plant-based, uh, a plant-based athlete. And I, on a serious note, I think it's amazing when people make these kind of choices um, to be the best them and that they live this life. And that frankly, like there's a little bit of a risk associated with that. I think um, if, you're an, if you're an elite athlete, because what if you're losing a fight? Are you in there thinking like, should I have had beef? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, there's like this is like the ongoing debate with like veganism versus, you know, just like normal, you know, meat and vegetable diets. I don't know. Like I was vegetarian for a year and I felt normal. Um mm. we're not nutritionists, but I would say that there's I think that you can do a lot with a plant-based diet personally. I think that um you can get a you can get your proteins, you can get your fats, like whatever you need, you can get from a plant-based diet. I mean, like always the general thought is like, if you're a plant-based, that means you're just eating salad all the time. That that's not the case. There's a lot of um, things out there, you know, especially today in today's world. 100%. Why don't we go on to a plant-based diet for a year? And then at the end of it, we'll do our first uh, MMA match or something. And then we'll see how we do. You do that. (laughs) i don't want to i i probably will have a little bit of bacon today i actually was a vegetarian for five years as well oh were you that was a very unhealthy one i had a lot of nachos you can have a lot of terrible food on oh totally it almost gives you more of like an incentive sometimes to have worse food uh like, but- you're like I, I can't have that so i'm just gonna have this well, this devolved greatly, but we're, I'm seriously, I was seriously excited to talk to Tamara Tebow because I think that she's awesome. I think she's, she's one of your country's uh, best hopes to medal at the Olympics. So that's awesome. And I hope she wins gold. I told her maybe I'm committing treason here, but go, I'm, a, I'm in Tam's corner. You're uh, in Canada's corner then. That's really nice of you. Oh, okay. Canada. We love you. And thanks, Stephen, for coming onto the show again for stories of the week. We always like to have you here, even if it just, sometimes turns into whatever this was grateful to have you on the show he's Stephen mccarty i'm kelsey mccarson and this was real talk